Hello! Welcome to my little corner of YouTube. My name is Tom Griffin, and today in this video, we are going to be looking at what happens to the good guys in Scripture. We're going to look at this through the life of Job, King David, and Zacharias. Let's get started. <laughs> good father or mother, you probably know this well, and you have sev let's say you have several children, and some of them are just complete and total knuckleheads. They um, are a little bit harder to love, but it doesn't mean you don't love them. I hope that you've never had a completely rebellious child, but if you've had uh, a completely rebellious child, they are even harder to love. But in this video, we're going to focus on what happens to God's children who are really, really good. Now, oftentimes we say, we wouldn't say something like we love them less, although in practice, that tends to be the case. When we have a child that just will not follow our rules and is completely recalcitrant, it is good, just, righteous, pure, and godly not to not love them, but to not lavish our love on them. In fact, we tend to lavish our love on our children who are obedient to us. That's natural and it's good. Today, we're going to be taking a look in this book right here to see what God does with his children whom he loves. And just a little hint for us from our standpoint and in the way that he chose to write up his scriptures, it takes a lot of faith to trust in the way that he lavishes his children. More on that closer to the end of the video. We're going to start in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha, and we're going to move our way backwards. Our first person is Zacharias. Not sure if you've ever heard of Zacharias before, but he's from Luke chapter 1. He's actually the dad, the father of John the Baptist, one of the most important men who have ever walked planet Earth. God gave Zacharias the responsibility for raising him. Let's look at how God introduces Zacharias to us, his children. There was a man named Zacharias. And his wife, her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. There's that word, blameless. Blameless according to who? Here it says it's according to God's standards, walking in all of his ordinances and statutes. And that's a priest. They have a lot more rules that they have to follow. Just keep in mind, this is before Yeshua died on the cross. This is a time in history where there were more people keeping more closely to Torah than ever before. That's just the times back then. And this man was walking in those laws before God, blameless. So, here we have this introduction. Here's this guy. He's really awesome. But what happens next? We hear about Zacharias going to burn incense before God in the temple, the holiest place on earth. And Zacharias sees an angel while he's burning incense. And he's super scared. But the angel says, hey, bro, don't be afraid. I come from God and I'm here to bring you glad tidings. You're going to have a son in your old age. And he is going to be righteously awesome. I'm talking upper level awesomeness, God watching him and happy with him all the time kind of awesomeness. He's going to lay the foundation for God. Zechariah should have been like, Oh, this is awesome. Here I am. Do with me as you will. But Zechariah tested the spirit. Zechariah asked him, How will I know that this is true? I'm an old man. But the angel Gabriel knows something that we most likely don't know. Because he responded with, Because you didn't believe what I've had to say, righteous Zechariah walking in all of the Lord's statutes blamelessly. I'm going to strike you mute until your son 
is born, you will not be able to speak. Wow. This really good guy, and then this bad thing happens to him. Why? Ah, that's tough. Let's look at the next one. If you've been watching my videos recently, you already know where we stand on Job. Our next character is Job. In Job 1.1, it tells us that Job was blameless and upright. Everybody knows what happened to Job. In fact, everybody knows what happened to Job so much that just at his name, everybody has a little bit inside of them that's kind of fear and trembling. He was the greatest man in the East. There was no one greater than him. And he lost everything in a day. It shows the power of the Almighty. Here we have this man, blameless and upright, just awesome sauce, and then he loses everything. Why? That's tough. Let's look at the next one. This next one is a little bit controversial because everybody has their opinion of King David. And pretty much everything that he did is right there on the table for us to see. I tend to be a sola scriptura kind of guy. And it's very difficult to come to this particular conclusion about David because God tells us everything about David first. And then he says, oh, by the way, David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life. How about that? There's actually a dot, dot, dot there. Did you notice the dot, dot, dot? The dot, dot, dot completes the sentence. This thing happened when David was 55. All the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now, I will be uh, making a Bible study on this book, and it will be available for free at my website via PDF. www.gleaningthescriptures.com is the website. There is currently a um, Bible study on Leviticus that is available there for you to download. If you have any issues with downloading that, you just let me know. So here we have David. God's telling us that he always did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But let's look at his life. It is full of trouble and difficulty. Even when he was at rest, there were things just unraveling and falling apart all around him. Was this because he was evil? No. No, it's not. Was it evil that caused Zacharias to become mute? No, he was blameless. Was it that Job was evil that caused him to lose everything in a day? No, he was blameless. Was everything unraveling for David because David was evil? No, it says here that he was righteous and upright. Yet, David describes his life like this. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to the grave. This is from the NKJV. In a different NKJV, it says, I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. How many times have you felt like you were overwhelmed with troubles? I'm like, do you know what it means to be overwhelmed? A lot of times when people are say that they're overwhelmed, it just means that they're pretty stressed out. Being overwhelmed means that the troubles or whatever's overwhelming you has taken over completely. David was overwhelmed by these troubles. That's why he called out to the Lord. Oftentimes when people are in that state of recognizing that the things around them are more powerful than they are, that's generally the time when somebody begins to turn away from their sins and turning towards what in their mind they see as being what they should have been doing all along. In the case of the very few righteous people who have ever walked on the planet, there is some improvement going on there, 
But they're not looking back at their past actions and saying, man, I was really wrong here. No, that's not really what was happening. In fact, they're being overwhelmed by evil because they're doing what is right. And the Lord is chastening them. Remember at the beginning of the video when I said that we'll be talking about faith at the end of the video? You know, in all three of these circumstances, we have these patriarchs, these pillars of the faith being introduced as blameless, followed by very difficult things befalling them. And we don't hear much about what's beyond those very difficult things. That is the nature of the way scripture is written and the way that it resides in our flesh. We have to have faith that God, that what God says about him promising, promising us that we have um, a hope right here in this life and in the future. We have to believe that those promises are true. We don't generally have examples of that in Scripture. We pretty much just have examples of suffering. Take Noah, for example. It says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. It also says that he was the only righteous man on planet Earth. And God destroyed the entire planet. That was a trouble that befell Noah. Having to build a skyscraper of an ark. Having to put his family and a bunch of animals inside of it. And then enduring the days of the flood. Nearly half a year before landing on lonely planet Earth to repopulate it, just him and his sons. It takes faith to trust that the Lord will indeed bless you if you endure trouble with an upright heart and with a spirit that is humble, knowing that you are nothing but a pawn in a greater spiritual battle ready to be used in any way possible, ready to give up everything except for your honor and integrity before the Lord. Got a little joke for you before we end here. I thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with your friends. I sure would appreciate that. And I bet you that they would too. Do something nice for somebody today. Who was the richest man who ever lived on planet Earth? give up. Most people say Solomon because he was so darn rich. But the answer is actually Noah. I know that that is not something that's funny. I've told that joke dozens of times and people generally don't laugh. It makes them think. Because the truth of the matter is is that Noah owned everything on planet Earth. And he got to that point because he was in good standing with the Lord. Adam was in that point for a little while but that wasn't, uh, that wasn't so good. He was consistently trying to eat, and the earth kept giving him thorns and thistles. I think there were several hundred years of difficulty for Adam, but not for Noah. Noah had such an abundance, he ended up getting drunk, which I'm sure righteous Noah realized, ah, God's telling me here that when I have this abundance, it's not all for me. I'm sure that the latter days of Noah were full of wisdom and goodness. We can trust that our patriarchs knew what they were doing, learned from their mistakes, and walked in righteousness and justice. Honor them, and honor God, and serve Him with everything that you have. That's why you were born. Have a wonderful day. See ya.